you know, how you can turn uh, bad soil into good soil in what, two years or something? Yeah, well, you know, if you think about what soil is, and this is funny because when I when I teach this, I'll always talk about the soil outside and then bring it to the soil inside your body. Let's do that just for a sake. It'll only take an extra few minutes. Um, but when it comes to farming, when it comes to dirt being turned into healthy soil, what makes, we know worm castings, for instance. Worm castings are some of the healthiest, nutrient-rich soil that you can plant something You mean in. worm poop? Worm, worm poop, shit. exactly. Worm so, turds? <laughs> worm turds. So <laughs> let's look at that in a bigger picture, though, because... Worm it, biscuits? It, if you think about it, there's... You know, bacteria lives in the soil and, you know, and, and fungus and protozoa. Because stuff's know, breaking down. You got leaves rotting and breaking down. You got animals that have died and they're breaking down. Even an animal got eight juices and blood, you know, soaked into the soil. And so that decays. Well, you know, historically, we may have even, you know, planted a seed and put a fish on top of it and let that, you know, that life there decompose with all the maggots and everything's pooping all over the place, bringing that little area of soil to life. Um, composting is very much like that. We take, you know, food, we take peels and stuff like and we throw it in the ground and we mix it up in the dirt. We're adding bacteria and life and nutrition to that particular area of soil. So in the dirt you have bacteria, protozoa, and the protozoa are eating the bacteria and they're eating the fungus. And, you know, worms eat the protozoa and, and frogs and birds eat the worms. And everything is pooping all over the place. And maybe alligators eat the birds. And, you know, everything is eating and pooping. And the poop is the soil. That is what is turning the unhealthy dirt into life, into fertilizer. You know, some people even buy manure as fertilizer, bags of manure mixed in dirt. That's my fertilizer. Where we've gone wrong in farming is, well, and this is largely where we get into GMOs, genetically modified organisms. And let's use corn as the example, which is our flagship GMO. And essentially what they've done is they've bred in to the corn the, into the seed, the ability to spray herbicides on it without killing the corn. And I, I think it was discovered by accident. I'm assuming it was, you know, Monsanto makes a chemical that you can spray in your gardens and it kills everything green, except that. Why didn't that die? I don't know. Let's study it. Okay, there's this gene. If we can take that gene out of this weed that didn't die when we sprayed it with our chemicals and insert that into the corn, then we can spray the corn. Meaning we can grow corn and douse the entire fields with this herbicide, killing all of the weeds that grow around the corn. So by getting rid of the competition, we can now grow more corn in less space. Okay, so that takes care of the weeds, but what about the, the, the bugs? What about the bugs that are eating the leaves? Okay, well, that would be a pesticide. So we got the herbicide thing. Let's make pesticides. Let's actually breed into the corn the sharp protein so that when the bugs eat any cell of the corn, it will essentially explode their guts and they'll die. Damn, that's savage. Yes. Yeah, see, people think, you know, people think that GMO means that they're making something that grows bigger and better and faster. No, it's growing more in less space by getting rid of the competition, getting rid of the bugs, getting rid of the weeds. Pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, things to kill things that would damage that corn plant. So now we can grow more in less space space but we're growing an unhealthy product and then the other thing about this pesticides herbicides fungicides that side that that part of the word is essentially something that kills and it's an antibiotic it's against life things that kill life they're against life mm -hmm. they're forms of antibiotics being sprayed <coughs> in our farm fields now by putting these in the farm fields we're not only killing the bugs and killing the weeds, we're killing the fungus, the protozoa, the bacteria, the worms, the things that bring the soil to life. So now we have a bunch of dead soil. And because the soil is dead, we have to add fertilizers to the field so that we can now grow the crops in these 
soil dead areas. That's why we need fertilizers. And if I were to bring that, you know, back home and think about, you know, the healthy soil, you have, you have trees, uh, plants, things growing in that soil and these big branches uh, of roots coming off of the trees and then secondary roots that are kind of like smaller and tertiary roots kind of finer going into the soil, absorbing the nutrients, absorbing from the poop, essentially, their nutrients, things that were created by all of those bugs that we described. That's actually how it is in your body. Take that and, you know, we eat food and our digestion for the most part is chewing our food, which breaks it down, works in digestive enzymes. We, our body has enzymes and there's enzymes in the food that help break down the molecules so that they can be used. And it goes into this acidic environment, our stomach that has you know, a, a very low pH that helps break down foods. But outside of that, that's about where our job, you know, where, where we kind of stop and the bacteria take over. So now in our bowels, we have bacteria and protozoa and funguses and things that are consuming those products that were broken down by our teeth, by our chewing, by the digestive enzymes. Now the bacteria are eating those and they're essentially eliminating this bio sludge. In that bio sludge- so they're pooping in you. They so are So the pooping. nutrients we absorb are basically the poop of the organisms that live inside our intestines and colon. Mm. Exactly. They're, they're being released by them. You That's know what's interesting is the, one of the first places that lions and different things go for when they kill an animal is they start tearing out the intestines and eating the intestines. <laughs> uh, a grizzly bear, when a grizzly bear kills a human, he eats your ass and your balls first. Just go... <laughs> Just goes, you know, it's like they, for whatever reason, they, you know, animals, especially carnivores, that's one of the things they do is they tear out the entrails of whatever they killed and eat it. Wow. That's the first thing. Huh. Well, Pretty that's, fascinating. that's where the nutrients are manufactured, released, and yep. where they're made. So that is interesting. Because um, the they don't eat greens or grass or anything like that, but that's, you know, when they eat like antelope or the different things that they, zebras, which are all eating grass. And grass, like you, know, you think wheat, wheat grass, all there was there's a hundred and I think it's a hundred and two of the known elements. Some of it in like trace quantities are in wheat grass, the juice that's in it, and so you get a high concentration of nutrients in that. And so when you look at like some of those big animals that are muscular, the water buffalo, all that, they're just eating grass and stuff all day long. And then the lions that don't eat that stuff, they eat meat. When they kill them, they're not chomping on their arms and their legs and their eyeballs or their brains or whatever first. They're eating, you know, ripping out their intestines. They start literally eating them from the butt. And I was watching a video today. It was like a bunch of lions that grabbed this thing, and one of them was just sitting there just, just eating the ass. You know, mm -hmm. they're ass eaters, basically, and then they start ripping the stuff out. And when you see hyenas getting in there, they're all going in and grabbing the internal organs and stuff first and taking off of that and, and eating those things first, especially like the liver, because that's where a lot of nutrients are. Hmm. You know, I'm, I'm thinking when uh, one of the neighborhood dogs jumped our fence and attacked our chickens, and sure enough, they went right for the butt. They ate the ass first. Mm -hmm. And they didn't really eat it. That was just where they did the kill. It was more of a, a sport to them. And then I killed this one. Let me go on to the next one. But It was it, a dog? Yeah, one neighborhood, Pitbull? one of those big huskies. Uh -huh. uh, six it's a foot, wolf, basically. Six wolf. foot fence. Not a problem. Yeah, wolves, right for whatever daytime. reason, they, they, I've read they kill for sport. Yeah, it was clearly just sport onto, onto the next. But in its DNA was go for the butt. Well, Going with that same thought about the uh, the fields and the and the soil and where the nutrients come from and and that being in our bodies, just like we killed the fields with pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides, think about all the chemicals that we're putting in our body that are not compatible with your microflora, with your gut organisms. You know, we the reason there's chlorine in the water is to kill. The chlorine is there to kill anything protozoa bacteria, things that might be growing in the water supply. The, Which uh, causes a lot of health problems and a lot of people died in the past and still do like in where they can't get clean filtered water. Yeah. You know, when it comes to animal foods, 
people think that they treat the cows with antibiotics. Well, the reality is the antibiotics are in their feed supply. They give the cows antibiotics not to treat them, but they give them on a continuous supply so that they can be mistreated. We mistreat the animals and we give them, you know, deplorable uh, conditions to where they are surrounded in disease. So they're on a continuous antibiotic they're supply. They're surrounded and stepping in their piss and shit all day long. They, they lock them in little pens and they're all pissing and shitting in the same place. It's disgusting. You know, they're stressed out, they're unhealthy, you know, they're basically like a stagnant pond of water where you get nothing but their excrement. And there's no plants or trees or things around to absorb all that stuff. And so they're basically, you know, living in their their own poop and urine. And, you know, if there's any kind of green or vegetation, they're grabbing that and they're getting all the bacteria from each other in it. And it's you know, you think about it, it's like if you when you go to the ocean, you can see like 20, 30 feet down and it's crystal clear and you got like coral and the fish and their colors are all bright. And you think anybody that's ever had like a fish tank and you got a fish that, like a goldfish and his eyeballs look like this big bubble or whatever. And it's all messed up and his his the coloring on their uh, skin looks just dirty and the water's kind of dirty He's like uh, Dr. Robert O. Young, who wrote the pH miracle, had talked about that. You got to think of your body as like, you know, your internal terrain is like the fluids, are like a fish tank. And so is the water clean and healthy? Because if it's clean and healthy, you don't have disease. You don't have yeast. You don't have candida. You don't have this. Basically, the bacteria that breaks our bodies down when we die is already in us. But because we've created such a, basically, we turn our bodies into garbage dumps and stuff we can't get rid of. They were literally rotting to death while we're alive. We're like literally stagnant ponds of water. So our whole immune system is basically just trying to keep the bacteria at bay. And, you know, that's why any kind of cold, cold or flu or whatever, especially as we age comes along, we, we get. Yeah. But when the water and your internal fluids, because you're mostly healthy, is clear, the yeast, the candida, all that, there's no food source for them, like the high sugar diets. There's nothing for them to eat and to break down because acid, you know, sugar ferments into acid when it's or when it's metabolized, it leaves an acid ash that, and so acid needs to be neutralized. With, it takes 80 parts alkalinity to neutralize 20 parts acid, and that's why, especially the greens and the juices and the green smoothies and all stuff, especially if you like to drink and you know you eat meat and you're eating nuts, all that stuff like leaves an acid ash, and so you want to. Have, provide enough greens or green juices and things that can make it easy for your body to alkalize and neutralize those acids and the, the proteins and the, the carbs or the nuts or whatever, the, you know, the candy, the, the alcohol, whatever it is that you're consuming. So it's, and then when you don't get that, you don't get those things that make it easy for your body to buffer those acids, you break down, you literally start festering and rotting from the inside. You, if you've ever done dark field microscopy where you do live blood analysis, you can see it in your blood. You see your red blood cells like ripped in half or they're not formed properly or they have free radical damage or looks like little starbursts, like almost like little suns. You got little you know things swimming around, cholesterol, it's really bizarre. It looks like broken glass and it's, you know, it's mm. floating around in, in your blood. It's the neatest thing. But that's sobering because when you see it, in your own living live blood, not the dried blood analysis, but the live blood and all that stuff's floating around, your white blood cells, all that stuff's floating around. It, you can't hide from that. It, it's in your blood. Yeah, you, you create an environment where your body is a better host to unhealthy life than the healthy life. You know, in, in our bowels, uh, our bodies are essentially about 80% bacteria when it comes to numbers of cells. We are outnumbered. You are a shell of a human, a host to all of this microflora, microorganisms, viruses, things that without you cannot live. And uh, the problem we create these unhealthy atmospheres, changes in pHs, as an example, if our bowels, if our pH in our bowels is out of whack, um, we're going to favor a different microflora than our optimal microflora. Those things get out of balance. 
Uh, so keeping those things in balance seems to be the key because we're hosting them and we're reliant on them for our life. Feeding the bacteria the right things, keeping them in the proper environment seems to be our, our you know, greatest path to health, to optimal health. The crazy thing is knowing that, knowing that we're a shell to this, these colonies, these, these microfloras, and we're feeding them chemicals that are going to screw them up. Uh, Jordan Rubin well said, um, he said, you've heard it well said that you are what you eat. But I say when it comes to animal foods, you are what they ate. And it makes sense. If yep. you are what you eat and they're eating crap and they're eating antibiotics, which are chemicals designed to well, kill. Well, like cows are mostly eating corn feed instead of the grass that they would normally eat, you know, on the range, which is, you know, they, that's why they got four stomachs is to break all that stuff down. And you get corn, you get a lot more um, sugars, I would assume, in that. And so that's fermenting, like you said, different bacteria in their body. That's not I, what they were designed or what they evolved to consume. So they're eating an unnatural food source. That's probably been sprayed with pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, <laughs> um, things like Roundup. When they harvest the wheat, they spray yep. it to kill it off and dry it out faster. Um, so yes, we're eating all of those chemicals. And remember, we're feeding our microflora. We're feeding them chemicals that they were not designed to take. And you know, it's funny, not only that, they'll actually package this stuff and put preservatives in the food. What is the purpose of a preservative? Most people- Kill bacteria. Exactly. Most people think it's just to make the food last longer. No, that's the side benefit because the bacteria can't eat it. Yet we're eating this stuff saying, here you go, microorganisms, eat this. <clears throat> well, if that's all you have for me, I guess I have to. And what are we doing? We're killing off our own microflora, creating environments to where other microorganisms are better able to survive, but they're not the ones that are optimal for our health. And I believe that's why we have so much irritable bowel disease, um, celiac disease, acid reflux, GERD, gastritis, you know, all of these different inflammatory bowel conditions, inflammatory skin conditions, because your skin is really just your, your gut on the outside. It's your biggest organ. Well, yeah, well, I would say they're one in the same organ if you think about it, though, because, you know, uh, <laughs> our skin's on the outside and then it folds through this hole here mm -hmm. that makes a tube that, you know, comes out our butts. True, true. And, you know, technically when we eat something, it's in that tube. Yeah, that's fascinating. I've never thought of it that way. Yeah. When you eat something, it's not actually in your body. It's in the tube that passes through the center of your body. But the, we have to absorb those nutrients through that barrier before it actually becomes part of us and be carried by the blood to all of our tissues. And that's why we would say if you have a skin problem, if we can see it on your skin, I can only imagine what it looks like in your gut, which is you know so much more uh, mucosal. Our skin eats, drinks, and it also excretes, just like our gut. They do the That's same why going thing. Going in the ocean is so healthy, but well, when assuming you're in clean water, clean, clear water, the salt, the minerals, your body absorbs it. It's yeah. good for your skin. When I used to live on the beach, I used to go in the ocean a lot when it was warm, and my skin was better. I felt better. I was healthier just sitting and soaking it for ten or fifteen minutes. Two, three times a week when I would go down to the beach, you know, I was always had a pretty good tan when I when I lived there. Was, <laughs> Making vitamin it was, D. Yeah. <laughs> vitamin D is my English vitamin. girlfriend would say. But it's like we we had our own little private beach there and we had umbrellas and the, we had our own waiters. They would come to the beach, and they would take you order, they bring you drinks, they bring you food from the restaurant that was inside the compound. It was experiencing it was like a, nature which is it, good for yeah. your mind i mean you're you're it just attacking your health from every angle yeah they call it five star living or five star resort it really was it was amazing i miss it sometimes yeah it was nice yeah i mean, I mean dr drugs are administered through the skin you know your skin mm -hmm. is an absorbing organ just like your intestines and then, you know, from our body, our waste goes back into that tube for elimination out the other end, just like waste comes out of our skin when we sweat. Yep. It, when we start thinking about it as the same organ. That's like saunas or jacuzzis. It's like it opens your, cause your pores to relax and open all the oil and the goo, it comes out. Right. And your skin is salty. Your body uses salt to move toxins. If you think about the ocean, the salt 
keeps helps with the pH, keeps the water clean, keeps life healthy. And our skin also has a microflora yep. that we like to annihilate with chemicals and cosmetics with all kinds of <clears throat> more, you know, uh, uh, sides, more antibiotics in them, preservatives and all kinds of chemicals that are, you know, our, our skin was not made for. Like makeup. <sighs> Damn, makeup. It's so... Clogs the pores. It does. Causes them to get inflamed. But that's why it's super important to do cardio is that I notice that if you just strictly do weight training, it's great and it's healthy. But if you want your skin to be amazing and you want to feel amazing, you got to weight train and you got to do cardio. And I found running, you know, I do this seven days a week most of the time, but sometimes I'll take two, three days off here and there, depending, you know, because your legs start to get sore after a while, your hips get a little sore or whatever. And, you know, you got to listen to your body and, you know, take breaks at times for a couple of days. You hurt your shoulder, weight training, take a few weeks off or whatever. Then you start back up slowly and you feel good. But the best thing where I feel mentally the sharpest is, you know, running for 20 minutes. I run at 6.3 miles an hour on my Woodway forefront treadmill. And I it wakes me up. That's when I do my my videos. I have like a smoothie afterwards, a protein shake and I take a shower and it's just I have to do it because that's the thing that makes me feel the best. And it's the best for the skin. And the less you do it and the more crap you eat, the more you get acne and pimples and, and other things. Because hmm. it's, you're not, Interesting. you know, your body removes toxins ideally through urination and defecation. But if you're not getting enough of the, you know, like I talk about the greens and stuff to neutralize the, the meat, you know, the meats and the alcohol or the carbs or whatever you're eating, it's it's the the urination and defecation is not not enough to get rid of it, and so when your body can't deal with something, it has to park it and it parks it, in, mm -hmm. you know, in the fat and it parks it in the tissues. And as we, you know, most people they get, they get bigger as they fill up with the stuff it can't deal with. If you think. You know, in the old days, typically during the winter, you're eating meat and smoked meats, meats and nuts and stored grains, which are all acid forming. But in the summer, you know, you're growing your greens and you got your garden and your cucumbers and you eat more alkaline things. And so, you know, the fat that you put on in the winter usually gets detoxed out in the summer because of all the greens. And so you stay naturally pretty healthy. But the way we eat is year round, we're eating just garbage, carbs and acid and protein and all that stuff. And so we literally fill up, you know, one of the things that Casey said in his readings is you are what you don't get rid of. And so if you're bought, if you're not getting the greens and things to neutralize the crap that's in our food, then it's parked in the tissues. And if you don't get that stuff, then over the decades, it just fills up. Your body fills up with that stuff and you rot while you're alive and you can see it at the cellular level. You can look, you can do dark field microscopy and see it in your blood. You're literally, you look like a stagnant pond of water and you're rotting to death. The organisms that break down your body when you die and you don't get oxygen and circulation anymore, they flourish in the acid type of environment and you, you rot to death and eventually you're, you, you die decades before you're supposed to. The plant foods are so important. Um, you know, you emphasize just now one of their functions, which is detoxification. And that's one that a lot of people don't think about. Um, a lot of people think plant foods are antioxidants. That's one of their functions. They help regulate hormones. They increase intercellular communication, helping your cells communicate and recognize problems. They do so much more. And, and that is why it is so important. And, you know, consuming more greens, everyone should be consuming more fruits and vegetables, probably, you know, 10 servings a day, all the colors being represented because each color does something, ha has a, a different profile. The color tells you something about them. For instance, your dark berries um, are more antioxidant than your lighter colors. Um, your... Uh, your carotenoids, we know that there are certain carotenoids like uh, lutein and zeaxanthin and things that would be important to help your vision. You know, they do so much more. So literally 10 servings a day, 
all the colors being represented. I have a feeling that, you know, in a few years, it'll be 15 servings a day <laughs> because we're depleting our soils, because they're becoming less and less nutritious. Organic fruits and vegetables have like 60% more nutrition mm -hmm. than conventionally grown that are grown with fertilizers instead of organic soils. Uh, but yeah, so important. And, and people are eating processed foods, things that come in packages that aren't real food, things that didn't exist just a hundred years ago. They taste good. <laughs> they're fun. They're yeah. convenient. They're it easy. It should be for cheat yeah. days. It shouldn't be like you're what you're consuming all the time. And that's the problem is most all of us are just eating cheat day food all the time oh, for yeah. breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And like I said, it's like 70, what was it? 74% of Americans are either overweight or they're obese. And it's, you know, what's amazing is if you, I see a lot of these videos circulate on Twitter and there are videos of like from when we were growing up in the 1980s and like everybody's thin, you know, their girls got all the big hair and guys are petite or they're working out and seeing people that were overweight was, you know, I remember where we went to high school, Gibbons, it's, I, there was probably a handful of people in each grade, each class that were fat or really overweight. Most everybody was petite thin. The guys, most of us worked out and were fit and lean. And then now it's like everybody walking down the street is overweight and fat. And you see like enormously overbeat, you know, overweight and obese people. And you just didn't used to see that before. I remember watching a documentary and it was um, films from the 1920s. Yeah. Even earlier, you look at a hundred years ago, same thing. Not no, you don't see a single obese. Nobody's fat obese. Person. Yeah, exactly. Not one. It's, it's like plant-based too. I heard that it's not good to like um, eat all plant-based because of the products they put. They put. It's not plant-based. Well, you know, it, it's interesting because, uh, we're made, I'm, I firmly believe that we're made to eat animal foods yeah, you and eat plant meat. foods. Yep. And if, from my perspective of helping people overcome digestive disorders, gut health problems and skin conditions, what I've seen is that people that are vegan have the hardest time getting well from those conditions yeah go into whole foods and some of the unhealthiest looking people that are vegan they're really skinny and scrawny and they look like they're on a hunger strike or they got something wrong with them and it's just because they're obsessive about the way they eat and they're just you know they're not exercising properly they're not getting protein and they don't look healthy i'm like i don't want to look that way yeah the way our bodies work you know our stomach has this acidic environment that is great at breaking down, you know, meat, uh, dairy, fish, and eggs, but it doesn't do so well with uh, fruits and vegetables and, and fibers. Those things are consumed by the flora in our intestines. So looking at it from that perspective, it seems like we're made for both of those types of foods. Uh, there's a lot of controversy about the best diet but what I've noticed is, and it makes sense that people have their perspectives based on their experiences. So someone, for instance, that has fought cancer or that helps people overcome cancers, it makes sense that more of a fruit and vegetable and herb and a plant-based diet, because it's detoxifying, would help someone get those results. Yeah, cancer seems to be a, um, like one of the things that Dr. Young his thesis was that it's the healthy cells, uh, he called pleomorphism. Um, the healthy cells turn into cancer because the fluids are acid and the cells are just trying to stay alive. And so what he's shown is that when you change the fluid back to alkaline in nature, those cancer cells devolve into healthy cells. And based on the environment, they also can grow into rod bacteria and other things. And he has V video of this that you can see you can see it on on youtube as a matter of fact it's called pleomorphism more pleomorphism and before he discovered this it's you know that was supposedly scientifically impossible once a healthy cell became cancer you had to eradicate it and kill it or cut it out and he showed that based on the you know the fluid that it was in it would 
adapt to that fluid. If it was acidic, it would become cancerous. If it was alkaline, then the cancerous would revert back to healthy, healthy cells. I, I, would, I might challenge that in a couple areas, um, but I would have to know more about the science. Was it, you know, in a test tube or was it in a person? Um, because parts of our bodies, we can actually alter the pH. Like our, our blood is, um, I think it's 8.35 to 8.45, a very narrow range, and we cannot change. Yeah, that's the th thing that a lot of people that hate on Dr. Young's work. They say, well, pH, the body keeps a pH in a specific range, which is true. But your body is using minerals and the things that you consume to maintain the pH. And the point Absolutely. being is that what he's done is people that have had cancers, people that have had terminal cancers have gone to him and he put them in this alkaline type of diet to help alkalize them and the cancers shrunk and the stuff just went away. Yeah, but from my but that perspective. that doesn't happen from, for everybody though, which is interesting, but a lot of people, you know, I had a, um, a uh, I assume it was a, a squamous that was on the side of my neck and I was, and I wrote about it, mastering yourself. And so I went really strict on my diet and I was eating very alkaline, very clean salads, smoothies, green juices, did the colonics and stuff. I'm going to do that too. And then <laughs> it took about, it was like five or six weeks. Like nothing was happening. I was going, man, I have to get this fucking thing cut off. And cause my grandmother had melanoma and died from my mother had a, she had a basal cell, a big one on her cheek. Um, and so, but right around week five or six, it almost looked like it started to deflate like a balloon. And then it just kind of like shriveled up and like little pieces started, became kind of hard and pieces started breaking off. Mm -hmm. And then I remember I had one, like one small piece left. And I remember I, I woke up in the morning and it was like blood all over my sheets. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> and then I felt my neck and then there was a little bit of a scab, but I guess in the middle of the night I had hit it or Scratched I caught the sheet and, and it ripped the last piece off, but it, you know, bled everywhere. And, uh, and it healed up completely. Yeah. But I wouldn't know if that was from, you know, high pH foods. I wouldn't necessarily give credit yeah, to well, the Well, quite pH. frankly, that at the time, I was working at the sports bar. I was drinking a lot. I wasn't eating as healthy because, quite frankly, I couldn't afford it. So I wasn't drinking the greens and doing all the smoothies and things as much. I was eating more sugar and proce you know, processed desserts. I was only running like three days a week. And I was occasionally, you know, maybe every over the course of every two weeks, I would hit the gym once or twice. There's a difference from the book. And now like you can see the picture. Yeah. And, yeah. And, um, so it's like, I, I wasn't on the diet anymore and my skin was drier was my elbows were a little kind of crusty. I'd put on some weight and I was a little thicker than I used to be. And so I wasn't in the same amount of health that I was, um, in like 2004, 2005, mm -hmm. 2006, when I was really anal, you know, at, I would say in the peak, peak health before I, I became a life coach. But, it, you know, it, when you're, you're, the amount of money you're making affects the quality of the foods that you can afford as well. Because, I mean, making a gallon of the, the green juice, that shit's expensive. And time if you're doing Yeah, exactly. You're doing green juice and you're doing smoothies. I go through about it. two gallons of green juice just myself about every eight or nine days. Obviously, if I have people over and, everybody, and a lot of my friends and family, hey, you got to have a glass. So, you know, usually gets drank quicker. Um, but I have at least one, sometimes two smoothies a day. And I, I notice a big difference. It's like I feel better. My energy's there. My eyes are bright and crisp. I, I need less sleep. But the less I do those things, the more tired, the more fatigued. I feel, but when I'm banging on all cylinders and I'm doing the weight training and the running and the greens, healthy and very lifestyle. Little, yeah, it's like I feel absolutely amazing. But at that time, when that thing popped up on my neck, I was like really slacking. You know, I was I was hanging out a lot. I was partying a lot with the people that I worked with. I was hanging out with my dad, and my family, and they they're always drinking every night. So and you know, I was like, hey, I go I go to go to Publix and buy a carrot cake or you know, a box of cookies. And so I was eating lots of sugars and lots of junk. And it was, like I said, it wasn't very healthy. And that's when it happened. Yeah, we can look at the foods, though, and say, you know, vegetables are alkalizing and meats are, you know, a more acidic diet. But does that mean that 
because they were alkaline foods that the pH somehow made a healthier environment or because the phytonutrients also do so much more like detoxify and um, you know one of their functions is actually causing cell apoptosis which is death to the cells and favoring cancer cells certain nutrients will actually attach to cells and be like holding a red flag saying to the macrophages come eat me uh, we get these from different plant foods that have those other functions so the other thing is like warts that I noticed, oh, like yeah. having warts, um, you know, I've had them on my bottom of my toe, which is not fun if you like to run a lot, but being really strict and alkaline, the warts completely go away. If I go through a period of time, many months where I'm fucking around and I'm partying a lot, I'm not exercising, I'm, I fell off the wagon, if you will, which, cause I've been doing this over many decades now, I've been experimenting with this stuff. It's like, I, I get warts, I get them on my thumbs or my fingers, I get them on the, you know, bottom of my feet or my toes. As soon as I get strict with a diet, it's like they like dissolve and they just shrink and go away. Hmm. Okay, three PRs are done. I think you need to record a brief setup for that because that. Well, yeah, we were just going to do a little thing to append. Yeah, to that. yeah, and it turns out. What fertilizer was, and, and that went in a whole. Holy shit! From the, uh, food so, All right. Well, you're gonna. Right, I'll, I'll record a. You're gonna find out if you have an audience for it. Oh, this probably get like maybe a small fraction, five, ten percent of the normal audience will watch this stuff. But that's okay. Cause a lot of people go to Dominic's office because the people that are most interested in that are more spiritually focused, holistic focused. Those are the ones that'll go. So it's okay. Anytime? Yep. Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and today I am hanging out with Dr. Mike. <laughs> Look up at the camera and smile. Which one? It's not lit. There Whoever it was is. the hey. red one. The red one. Okay. And today we're gonna and today we're gonna talk about health and some really interesting things about the bacteria and the processes that are going on in your body. Because we just did a a news piece on what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. And that area, Russia, Ukraine, is where like 25% of the world's supply of fertilizer comes from. And so one of the things that President Biden was saying recently is that we should expect because of the war uh, disruption, there's going to be food shortages. There's, so there's going to be things that people aren't going to be able to get. So it brought up this really interesting conversation on health in the body. I, you know, I, I think a good t title for this segment would be You're Full of Shit. I couldn't put that in the, the headline. So this one, could the title just message for Chunky or whoever edits this. It could be food shortages and, you know, something to do with optimizing your body's health. I don't know. We when, Once you get it edited, we'll, yeah. we'll figure something out. Jim. You're full of fertilizer. So this is the open for the, the health video because we didn't, we just kind of, we got on a rant. I was like, oh, this is part of the Ukraine thing. I wanted Mike to talk about um, some of the things he was talking about and ended up being this whole long diatribe that really became its own video so, so now you know chunky. now you know good luck we're all counting on you <laughs>